My name is Laura Jean Bernhardson and we're here in one of my locations, a fresh collective. I own three retail stores and we specialize in Canadian fashion designers. I got involved with the Syrian refugee movement here in Toronto close to a year ago. It all started with my cousin Jennifer Nagel who put a post on Facebook asking if anybody wanted to start a sponsorship group with her. and I asked people to share it. Later that day I checked and it was like maybe 18 shares and I'm like, oh great, it's getting shared. And then it was like 273 shares. And what happened was right away the response was overwhelming. People started just bringing hundreds of bags of clothing. The second day I put out a call for volunteers and got about 50 volunteers in 24 hours. Eventually we had so much clothing that we needed to find a space to distribute out of. And so we got a donated storefront. The Syrian newcomers could come and shop for free for clothing. Part of what we loved about that idea too was the dignity it allowed. When everything in your life is uncertain, to be able to come into a space where you're welcome and you're able to choose the clothing that you're going to wear, you know, as you go out in the world, as the kids go to school, as people start looking for jobs and going to job interviews, we wanted it to be a real experience where they got service, they got to choose, they got welcomed. Part of the reason I left the clothing drive at the three month mark was that I was getting Facebook messages from a woman in Syria named Ramia. She was contacting me asking for help to get out of Syria and to she wanted to bring her kids to Canada. We decided that we had to take her on and in a very short period of time, just a few days, we had a fundraiser ready to go and we were raising money to help bring Ramia and her family over. I just felt like as a mother, what would I do in that situation? So obviously anything <laughs> to get my kids to safety. And Ramia was there in my mind as I went through the days. So as I was playing Lego with my son or you know doing the things we do, it just was really hard to think, what's it like for her there? Once that sort of personal connection had happened, it wasn't just this idea of something I couldn't do anything about. It was something I had to do something about. Our current project is raising money for a woman named Noor, and she's got a husband and a young son. They're Syrians who were displaced to Libya, was safe there for a while, and then war broke out there. Now their permits, their work permits are expired. They can't work. If somebody's in front of you to help, whether it's your neighbor next door exactly. or across the world, exactly. help them. This is our cause now. Yeah. So we're raising 23000 which is what it'll cost to bring that family of three over here. I think that people see ordinary people, myself included, in motion doing things and then it, you get out of that feeling of like, oh I wish there was something I can do, because you start to see all the possible ways there is something you can do. Sometimes it occurs to me like, okay, that's it, I gotta stop, and sometimes I think, how could I? How could I stop when, so I imagine this project will get finished and another one will start.